Hello, everyone. So, okay, before I forget, because I forgot on the last video to mention this, uh, because I got some complaints uh, from people saying that they didn't know when my videos come out, because sometimes it's a bit irregular. I try to always have a video out at least once a week, sometimes twice a week. It's usually on Tuesday and Friday-ish, but sometimes it's a bit different from that. Um, once again, this isn't my job. My job is as a translator, as a freelance translator. So sometimes I, you know, anyway. So there is a fix for this. If you do what, um, right under this video, I think there's that subscribe. And if you are subscribed, then there, there should be that bell. If you click on that bell, then you'll get a notification every time I have a new video. So you don't have to worry about if it's up or not, or if, uh, you know, if it comes out on Tuesday or Monday or Friday, or if it's not coming out on a Friday this week or something along those lines, you'll just get a notification every time there's a new video, it notifies you and you don't have to keep checking to see if there is a new video or not. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about, well, I want to talk about a message I received here because someone uh, wrote to me and said that each new project demands a lot of effort and sometimes research, but the client doesn't have the time to, to wait for you. It would be interesting if there were some resources explaining how to effectively approach the translation of a text, especially in an area you don't know much about without losing too much time in the research process. So basically this question has to deal with after you've contacted a trans uh, our client to do their translation, they get back to you and say, okay, you know, you can work on our translation and it ends up being, you know, engineering or biology translation or chemistry translation, something like that. And you maybe don't know much about the area or you don't know much about that specific company and their terms or something they use. And so how do you deal with that? Because obviously you don't have time to educate yourself in biology overnight, but you need to hand the translation in by tomorrow. So how can you deal with that? First of all, if it is a translation that has any type of spe uh, specialization, so if it is a, you know, a scientific translation, an engineering translation, if it's any type of technical translation, even if it's, you know, say an accounting translation or has legal terminology, anything along those lines, then it should be specified ahead of time. The client should notify you and tell you. If the client doesn't, and you aren't told anything and suddenly you receive this translation or this text with all these chemical compounds in it or something along those lines, then of course you have every right to tell the client and say, whoa, 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 okay, you didn't mention that this was intense chemical terminology, which I'm not familiar with. I can still work on it, but I might need a bit more time to become familiar with it. Or you can just say, look, this isn't my specialization. You need to find someone who specialized in this. And so I won't be able to work on this. They'll definitely appreciate that honesty more than you bungling up the job. And so if it is something that requires a certain amount of specialization, you should be notified ahead of time. Don't be scared to ask, but even so it's up to them to notify you. And if they haven't, don't be scared to tell them, hey, this is pretty specialized stuff. Either it's gonna take me longer, I might have to charge more, or I just can't work on it. And so maybe I can recommend you some people, but I can't do it. Now, let's say they do let you know. They say, look, this is an engineering thing. It's not too complicated. You should be able to work on it. You say, okay, fine. So you accept to work on it. And then they send you something and it has its own terminology that's obviously very specific to their company or to their industry, something along those lines. At that point, what you can ask for is for either a glossary that they might have or past translations, maybe past versions of their website, past um, brochures or catalogs or anything that they've worked on. If you aren't the first to ever translate into your language, then they have something else some, or something they use. Even if you are the first, many times they have something they use as a standard or something along those lines. So there too, feel free to ask them. And it shows that you kind of know what you're talking about or you've been through this before. And I can say because I've been through this before. If they use certain terminology, you need to use their same terminology. I've m made translations in the past that were completely 100% correct, but it was just different terminology from the one they'd been using in the past. And so they, uh, they were not happy about that and I had to redo it all. So don't be scared to ask for any examples of terminology that they might have. And you can say, look, do you have any examples of past terminology, and it, you know, catalogs, websites, anything you might have, just so I can make sure all the terminology is consistent throughout all your literature. Now, having said all that, there could be the situation where they say, okay, we have this engineering translation to do or whatever it might be, and uh, it's not too technical, you can work on it, and we've never translated into your language before, but we need it to be correct. So then what do you do? I don't have examples of past translations though. And so how do I know which terminology to use? Well, here as well, 
First of all, there, there are several very useful links. I made a uh, video before called Useful Links and I'll link to it uh, in the description below. And that has some good links where you can deal with this. Otherwise, I can walk you through exactly what I do. And now here's the bad thing about translation. Unfortunately, translation is the nature of the beast. It's many, 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 many different languages and, and also many specializations. I deal with Italian to English, mostly financial and legal translations. So I have the websites that I use for those. There are many other websites, many, many other ones. In fact, I've done some medical translations and I know there's a very, an excellent website for Italian to English medical translations, but I, I can't remember what it, what it is right now. And um, so anyway, I'm gonna show you, I'll, I'll do a screenshot of what I use and, uh, and how I use it and why I use it and hopefully that'll help you out. And from then you can also see how you can discover your own websites to use that can help you out in the same way, uh, depending on your language combination and on your specialty as well. Okay, so here we are on one of the websites that I use quite often, and this is lingue.it, or anyway, I, then now obviously I use the Italian to English version, but as you can see, it's available in quite a few other language combinations. So I think if you go to linguee.com, you can get all the other language combinations. Anyway, I use this language combination because it's what I'm used to. And let me show what happens here. This is something I had recently, cellulare secca. And so it's a term that, you know, maybe I wasn't sure exactly how to translate it. And so I had to look it up. And so what you do when you look it up here, you see all these are examples in Italian. All these are examples in English. And these are translations that have been done in the past of this same term, cellulare secca. Here we see in parentheses, flat rate tax. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see here, cellulare secca, here, single dividend tax, so that's different. So what do you do in this? Well, you keep going. Opción cellulare secca, flat rate tax option, cellulare secca, here you see withholding dry, this is obviously a bad translation, doesn't mean anything. Um, and then uh, let's keep going down here, uh, we see flat rate tax. Okay, so you see a certain trend starting to form, flat rate tax um, seems to be the uh, the norm because I would have thought something like flat tax rate but here flat rate tax seems to be what everyone's doing. What I like about this is that it shows various examples of what's been translated in the past and you can kind of use your head to see what works and what doesn't and you know you see something like withholding dry which obviously is wrong and uh, and so you can decide not to use that but to use something else. Now say you use something like this you would say um, flat rate tax and then your client replies to you said oh no that's wrong it should be flat tax rate that's completely wrong why did you come up with that you're the worst you're the worst you can always say well look what I like about here is that they show the source so let's here let's open this in a new tab and let's open this in a new tab and these are the source uh, websites that where the original translation was found so if I go here and uh, you can see that this was originally Ministerio de la Economía y de la Finanza. This was the Ministry in Economics and Finance uh, document. So this is pretty official. If they translated it, translated it this way, chances are that it's good enough for the client, right? Because you know this is this was done by the Italian government. So um, and in fact here. So what I will do usually with the client is I will find this on. Oh no, searching on the wrong place. Uh, here I will search for Cedolare Seca. And as you can see, it's 162 pages, so it might take a while to do this. And here also I will search for flat rate tax. And let's see if it comes up with it at any point soon. But, uh, you know, it should find wherever this translation is on this document. There we go. And um, page 116, yeah. And you see Cedolare Seca. And then here on this, you see there, flat rate tax. So what I would do is I would send both of these uh, files, these PDFs to the client or the, or the website that they're from and say if you check on page 116 you'll see Cedulare Seca here and you'll see uh, on this page on uh, you know page 114 that it was translated with flat rate tax which means that this is the translation that is being used by this government entity and that'll be fine for the client. If you can show something official like this then it should be fine. If there's, if, in fact if they're still not fine with it you can go and try some of these other options and uh, you can say, look, it's been translated this way in various other places, various different websites, so it should be okay. And so, it, you know, you kind of cover yourself because here you uh, show that you didn't just come up with it by yourself, but it's been used in the past.
But let's do another website here, contextreverso.net. This is a pretty good one. It works in more or less the same way. As you can see, I use the Italian to English. That's the one that already comes up. And uh, these are some searches I've done in the past. Let's do something that's not too hard. I think I remember doing this. So basically here, mandatario, you see authorized representative, authorized representative, agent, agent, trustee, trustee, agent, agent. And it works in exactly the same way, authorized representative. And so once again, it has different things. It doesn't give you one final answer. You have to kind of use your own judgment. Okay, in this context, is it better to use authorized representative or agent or trustee? And, uh, and you can check depending on the context and, uh, and the content of what you're translating. And here too, I think, yeah, there you go. They have the link to the original, so you can you can always link it back to the original, and so it works pretty well. They also have here a list of translations used in the past for this. So anyway, it works in more or less the same way. I find this quite useful. And once again, here, in fact, I think they have different languages that you can translate to and from. So um, in fact, yeah, so if it's Italian, it goes into here. If it's English, it can go into here. So you can look at the language combinations and figure out what works best for you. So here's something else that I came across there. Honda for fun, that was it. Because I don't do too many technical translations, and so I don't use these too often, but here's one that I came across. And this is just basically an online glossary of different terms that are technical. Maybe I want to know, oh, how do I say, you know, ginestra in English? And so I'll look up the term Ginestra, there we go, and broom, there you go. So if you can find certain online glossaries or dictionaries like this, then they can definitely be worth it as well. By the way, you should bookmark any one of these that you find so you, you don't waste time searching for it in the future. Once again, however, this is only English and to Italian, so if you are if you don't deal with English to Italian, then this precise website won't be all that useful to you unfortunately, but you will find other ones. And just, this just gives you an idea of the type, the different types of help you can find, online dictionaries or examples of past translations. So say you don't know where to start at all. Something you can do is just go on to Google itself and then just uh, type in, I don't know, say, Oniri, oh, Oniri Sushani. In, yeah, in English. So actually, let's start here with English. So here there's something that is uh, is obviously in Italian and I don't know how to say it in English. And so I decide to search for it. First of all, the first thing that comes up here, if you Google it, will always be Google Translate and social charges is wrong. That's not how it should be translated. And some of the other ones are like this bab.la, whatever it is, for some reason, uh, oh, actually here it doesn't seem too bad because sometimes some of these just use Google Translate. But here you can click on this one and you see social security taxes. Okay, so this might actually be correct. And let's go here. Uh, here we see context reversal, which I guess is the one I used in, uh, in the past as well. And uh, this, this once again is that same website the reverse so on and so here you see social security contributions, social security contributions, social contributions, social charges, etc. So it kind of gives you an idea and you can see which one you should choose. But this is what I was looking for there. Usually you'll find something that says pros as well. Pros is uh, usually the best option. If I can find pros then that's the one I'm going with because pros has a very good selection and they're very precise and it's driven by other translators who then correct each other. And so here you see the ter Italian term, you see the English translation, so social security contributions, and you see, you know, someone else also wrote benefits. And so you can once again, judge for yourself and see what they say and see which one sounds best to you in the target language. So if you can find, in fact, wh what I will do many times is, let's go back here to the original search, is I will search either in inglese, which means in English, and you know, in Italian, or I'll just put English, and you know, which gets us those, those results as well. Or sometimes I'll just put, say, English pros. And uh, so then the pros.com example, if, there, if one exists, will show up right away. And, um, and you know, I won't waste time with the other ones. Usually, if I can find an example under pros, then that's the example I want. Now, let's look again for mandatario in English. And here we see word reference came up, of course, 
the problem with Italian is that many words are exactly the same as uh, very similar to Spanish and so many times Spanish pops up and uh, and so and in fact this is President Chief will be wrong but Mandatario Asian representative it, it will be right and um, generally wordreference.com is a is a good source as well this is a Spanish English one um, for those of you who work in Spanish English you know um, but if uh here in english or in english you can fiddle around with the google search and see what pops up if you see wordreference.com if you see prose.com i like as i said lingue i like the constant the reverso um if any one of these are good websites to use and as you keep going in your language combination and in your specializations you'll come across other ones like if you work in spanish this spanishdict.com might be an excellent source for all I know. If you find that it is, definitely bookmark it because you're gonna to wanna to use it in the future uh, for an online dictionary. Likewise with Spanish Central and whatnot. So to me, like I don't know that much about Spanish translations and so this would all be new to me. And so if I'm going through it for the first time, these are some of the things that I would be searching for and want, you know, bookmarking. So, I mean, that's pretty much it in terms of uh, trying to find places that uh, help you find new terms and can help you with specific technical terms, terms you might not be used to searching for in the future. And it shows you sort of what I do when I'm trying to search for terms as well. And the websites that I use, and hopefully, I mean, I'm sure there are equivalents in all sorts of language combinations. So unfortunately, there's so many different language combinations that I don't know them. I just know what I deal with, but you will probably find things that work in a similar manner and you should definitely bookmark those and go for those in the future and be searching for stuff like that. So I hope you found that useful and I, I hope that it helped to show a bit of the process that I go through when I'm searching for new terms and terms that I don't know, the websites that I use and uh, the mentality basically in trying to find the best term in the target language that you're looking for and to make sure that you know you get the right sense in terms of the context and uh, and in terms of the document that you're using, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, hopefully you found that useful. If you did, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos like this. And like I mentioned before, if you click on that little bell next to the subscribe button, then you will get a no notification every time there's a new video. So you'll be notified when there are new videos about freelancing and freelance translation more specifically. So that's about it. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.